here's a little spontaneous um, lesson I want to talk about because um, again it's going to be about 12 tone. Um, that's going to be a little bit of a theme now. Now we got the, all the intervals out of the way. I'm going to be talking about that concept quite a bit. So I said last time the first time I wrote a 12 tone row was um, the, uh, the fatal self-inflicted disfigurement one. Um, but that's not entirely true. First thing that happened was the following accident, kind of. So um, I remember I was in the first music school with my first uh, classical uh, teacher. And um, I, for some reason I showed him this riff. And that riff is in Drifting Further, by the way. Um, and I, I don't know, he, he, he really kind of motivated me. His name is Erich Schneider, by the way. I wanted to just put that out there uh, because uh, I, I'm thankful to what I've learned from him. Um, and he um, told me, I think you're writing a 12 tone row here. It's, a, it's not a 12 tone row because it doesn't stick to the rules because I am repeating notes. Um, but it has all 12 notes in it. So um, yeah, he kind of showed me each note that was there and it, it, it showed me that it was all the 12 notes, you know? Um, so yes, yeah, this little thing here. still love it wrote it with uh, 18 19 years old or something and I still approve of every note um, thing is yeah I did not think about 12 tone at all I didn't know about that concept as I said mr. Schneider he uh, told me about that he told me about the the presence of this concept um, again I would think I got inspired by yeah listening to bands like Sappho that are chromatically really dense. So I, I try to always, if there's something nice sounding, I always want to negate that. And if you're using chromaticism, you're going a half step up or something, um, you get, sometimes you get the opportunity to negate something. So um, I guess this is how it works. So what I was, thinking about, I, I can tell you maybe. So we've got uh, this thing. So this is one, two, three, four, five notes. I, I, I don't want to bother um, finding out which those notes are. I mean, I could bore you here with what they are, but um, I'm just gonna play them and tell you that they you know, in the end it's 12 tone. Anyway, so this little motive here is the, the first concept should be pretty clear when you see this. It's one of these. So that's my motivation basically. That's the, yeah, motivation. So <laughs> that's the motive here. In the beginning, again, it sounds kind of lame, you know. That sounds kind of, um, yeah, that is kind of uh, major. So here's exactly what I'm saying. Um, I'm using something that sounds kind of happy, and then I'm negating it with the next thing, um, which is the nine, the minor nine. So. That to me is, is it just sound it sh sounds interesting, and these notes are one two three four five six. 
six notes already. So, so the next thing that I've done is uh, pretty uh, done actually. Now I'm moving this whole thing a tritone up. Um, all in itself, itself again, it sounds pretty happy. But in relation to the root note, it's already uh, uh, more intimidating sounding. Okay, so here you see the first time where I'm actually repeating a note, which is not what Schoenberg originally intended for a 12 tone row. You know, this, um, I'll call this one, this. This uh, B flat, yeah, this B flat here is being repeated. Um, but it definitely gives us one, two, two more notes. Yeah, we didn't use that one as well, so three more notes. Yep, and also a fourth new note. Um, yes, so now we're at ten new ten notes, a twelfth, a, a ten tone row so far, and it sounds really almost kind of not satisfying so far, you know. So again. Now, by using the notes that you haven't used so far, you're creating this chromatic kind of confusion and this obscuration. Yeah, the, the funny thing is the last few notes are basically in a whole tone kind of um, relation to the root note. Yeah. Exactly. So, In, in comparison to the other thing that I've done uh, this month with the 12 tone thing is um, this is kind of the opposite this is is rooted in ideas in, in yeah working on motives and in a melodic kind of interest you know um, whereas the, the collective 12 tone row was an experiment it was random notes and yeah I, I I won't use that for me it's there goes more care and more thought goes into it so anyways um, so far it sounds kind of unsatisfying and then I'm pulling it back you know into the the realm of I don't know cool scales so what happens is um, this note here it's a, a, a D sharp uh, we had that already uh, when we sequenced this motor this you know this one so that's not another note but this one is the 11th note we haven't used that anywhere before then this step is just the root note and then this one is the 12th note and the last note is basically the sixth to our root note. So altogether I think 
it it just travels in a nice way and also in an unexpected way where things sound kind of happy and you know kind of clownish <laughs> So this was basically all the nice connections and now I'm filling it in with the kind of evil notes. <laughs> So yeah, I'm repeating three notes, um, so it doesn't qualify as a traditional 12-tone row, but it is 12-tone, you know, it, it uses all the 12 notes and it uses them to, I don't know, to be as obscure and as crazy as it can be, I guess. Um, maybe at the end I can talk a little bit about the chords that are in here and I don't know, it's a, let me see. <laughs> Because at the end, that's kind of a augmented kind of thing. So we have these uh, major nine chords. That's pretty cool already. Just um, sent to the tritone basically, but the whole chord. And then at the end, we've got this little augmented thing. So, yeah, I don't know, it's, uh, it, it just happened though, you know, it happens note to note and um, it's kind of funny how that the first 12 tone row that I really came up really happened on accident and my teacher, Eric Schneider, he kind of opened my eyes to that. Alright, see you next time.